Stay tuned until the end of this video and watch as I push this telescope to the max by adding advanced equipment and fancy cameras. Hey everyone, John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze. In this video, we're going to test Celestron's Travelscope 60, which is virtually identical to the Travelscope 70, which is virtually identical to the Zyker series telescope, the OSY series telescope, the Solomark telescope, the Mermac telescope, and so many others. Now, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, but I'm willing to guess these telescopes don't just look alike, they're probably identical, made in the same factory. Now in this video, we're going to figure out how to use this telescope to see things in space. This is Learn to Stargaze. Now I picked this telescope up for $49 at Canadian Tire. It was on sale for 50% off. At the current US Canadian exchange rate, that's just $36 US. Pretty good deal, right? Well, I've actually owned this scope before. And honestly, it was pretty frustrating to use right out of the box for looking at space. So during the course of this video, I'm going to see what I can do to improve on my last experience and see if I can make this telescope into a decent beginner telescope for astronomy. But first, let's open up the box and see what's inside. Cue time lapse. Got my trusty Cutco scissors in case I need them. Manual. 8mm eyepiece, 20mm eyepiece, it's like a moon filter, 45 degree diagonal, 3x bar low. Just a reminder, do not use this telescope to look at the sun. Okay, I also noticed that the finder scope is missing one of the adjustment screws. So I'm going to just borrow that from the Barlow because we don't use a Barlow very much and I'll talk about that later in the video. Okay, now let's put it together. Cue another time lapse. Now it's important to recognize that telescopes are designed for specific jobs. There is no one telescope for all purposes. That's why, as a professional amateur astronomer, I have about 10 telescopes. So in looking at the Celestron Travelscope 60, as it comes in the box, I can tell you exactly what it's designed for by looking at a few of its features. First, we can see that it includes a 45 degree diagonal. Now, these are designed for looking at things on Earth, primarily landscapes. If you try to look at something high in the sky, the eyepiece might put your head in an awkward position. This diagonal also contains an erecting lens or prism. This flips the image to be right side up, which means that it's designed for looking at things on the ground. If you're looking at space, right side up is irrelevant. Now I believe the Celestron Travelscope 70 and similar scopes come with a 90 degree diagonal, like this one, which would effectively solve this issue. Now telescopes designed for looking at space come on mounts. This telescope does not come on a mount, it comes on a camera tripod, which means it's designed for looking at things on Earth. However, this telescope does come with a Vixen mounting plate. So if you have a telescope mount, like this one, you can simply attach the Celestron telescope to the mount, just like this. It's interesting to note that most travel telescopes, especially premium models like the Celestron C90, assume you have your own mount. So the fact that this includes a tripod at all is kind of a bonus, even if it's just for terrestrial observation. If you're looking for a budget astronomy mount for this telescope, I recommend either the Twilight Nano mount or the Celestron Alt Azimuth mount. Now the most important attribute of a telescope is the aperture, not the magnification. Aperture is the diameter of the primary lens. Aperture determines the resolution of the telescope or how much detail you'll be able to see. At 60 millimeters of aperture, or 70 millimeters for the larger model, this telescope is designed to view large bright objects. If you're looking to use this for astronomy, that means viewing large open star clusters from dark skies, as well as the moon and planets like Jupiter. But what about the optics? This telescope has a focal length of 360 millimeters and an aperture of 60 millimeters, which gives us a focal ratio of six. It comes with a 20 millimeter eyepiece, which gives 18 times magnification and an eight millimeter eyepiece providing 45 times magnification. It also comes with a Barlow lens. 
Now a barlow goes between the eyepiece and the telescope. In this case, the barlow triples the magnification. However, tripling the magnification using a barlow makes the telescope much harder to point. Now by going to a website called astronomy.tools, we can simulate what you'll be able to see with this telescope. Now the most popular target is Saturn, so let's see how it does. When you stargaze with a telescope, you always start with the eyepiece with the highest focal length. In this case, that's the 20 millimeter eyepiece. And Saturn with this eyepiece is, well, a speck. All right, let's try the eight millimeter eyepiece. Now we've got a larger speck, no help there. Well, remember this telescope comes with a 3X Barlow, which should increase the magnification by the factor of three. Okay, when you look at that, it is possible, I won't say easy, but it is possible to get a view of Saturn's rings with this telescope. Okay, so let's test it. Now there are three simple tests you can do to confirm that your telescope setup is adequate for looking at space. One, is it easy to use when pointed straight up? Two, does it effortlessly move? And three, does it stay exactly where you put it when you let go? As a bonus, we want to know, can it hold an iPhone? Sort of? As another bonus, which I call the punch test, you should be able to punch them out and have it stay in place. Let's test it on this telescope first. It passed. Ow! Okay, so this telescope definitely passes the punch test. Can the Celestron Travelscope 60 take a punch? <laughs> now there are two things you can do to make this a better telescope for observing things in space. The first thing you can do is replace the 45 degree diagonal with a 90 degree diagonal. So let's do that right now. The second thing you can do is take the telescope off the camera tripod that it comes with and put it on a proper telescope mount. So let's do that now. And now this telescope passes all five of our tests and is now a suitable telescope for observing the night sky. So the first thing you do every time you set up a telescope is make sure that the telescope and the finder scope are pointed at exactly the same spot. The way to do that is to choose a distant landmark. I'm gonna choose a chimney. So I'm gonna get the finder scope pointed approximately at the chimney, and then I'm gonna look in the telescope and it probably won't be there. Now, then what you wanna do is adjust the telescope, moving it left and right and up and down until you've found that landmark. In my case, a chimney. After I've got this centered on the chimney, uh, then I need to look in the finder scope and turn these adjustment knobs, and this again might take four or five minutes, until I've centered the finder scope in the chimney. Then you wanna go back and forth between the finder scope and the chimney a few times, just to make sure that they are both pointed at exactly the same spot. You also need to know how to focus your telescope. I like to use my telescope without glasses and I focus it to my prescription. You focus using these knobs here. Now, you'll need to focus the telescope every time you change eyepieces, every time you move the telescope, every time you change people because everyone's gonna have a slightly different prescription and the telescope will adjust to their eyes. Another thing that will help you with this telescope a lot is to stargaze from a chair because this telescope is not very big and it's kind of shaky. Having a chair will reduce the length you'll need to put on the tripod, uh, which will reduce some of the shakiness. So I wanted to see how this scope would do on the moon. So I put it on a Skywatcher AZ GTI equatorially mounted go-to mount. And again, everything's the same except for a Celestron zoom eyepiece here and the Celestron XYZ uh, iPhone mount. And so here we have the telescope pointed at the moon uh, and we've actually got some pretty good detail here. So you can adjust the brightness down so you can see that uh, Lunar Maria and we can probably even uh, zoom in a bit to see um, some of the craters. Can refocus here just a little bit, just like that. Uh, now, if it weren't full moon, you'd see uh, quite a bit more detail along the Terminator. That's the line between night and day on the moon. Um, but because it's a full moon, now is the perfect opportunity to just really view those lunar seas. 
So the big test for any beginner telescope is can it see Saturn? And although we've got this hooked up on a maybe $500 AZ GTI mount by Skywatcher uh, using a zoom lens by Celestron, here we have Saturn uh, on the iPhone screen. And you can see the division in the rings just a little bit. I'm gonna take a video and process the image. You can uh, use a software called Registax to turn videos into pictures and you bring out a lot of detail. We're gonna give it a shot and see what it looks like. Uh, and that's from <laughs> downtown here under uh, three street lights, which don't typically affect planets that much, um, but I'm impressed nonetheless. So I wanted to find out what would happen if we connected the Celestron Travelscope 60 to a designated astronomy camera. Now, to do that, the scope will have to be guided. So we've got a German equatorial mount, in this case, the Celestron AVX. Controlling it all, we've got an ASI Air that'll allow me to control the camera and the mount from my phone. We've also got a guide scope here, which is a 50 millimeter scope that will tell the mount where to go. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work, I don't know if the photos are gonna turn out, if they'll be lame or awesome, but I'm really excited to find out. Let's give this a shot. So I did a 30 second test image on the Andromeda Galaxy and it looks like it's centered in the frame. We've even got a satellite crossing into the picture. Now this image isn't great, but that's because we haven't taken our flats. Basically, we need to tell the telescope what a plain white background looks like, and that will get rid of the vignette. So let's do that now. I'll also add dark and calibration frames to account for the noise in the camera that's visible when photographing in extreme low light conditions. All right, so here's the first 180 second exposure with the calibration frames at it, and holy cow, I can't believe this actually worked. You can see I've chilled the camera down to minus 10 degrees Celsius, and that really increases the quality of the image. Okay, now the next step is to take about 15 of these images and stack them all together. All right, here's the final product. Now, if you're not familiar with what this should look like, this should blow your mind. If you are familiar with what this should look like, it's not that great. You can see a lot of internal reflection on the images. The stars are bloated and have some aberrations that you wouldn't get with a better telescope, like let's say the Radian Raptor. What I had to do to get it in focus, I had to actually add a 90 degree diagonal from the Celestron Inspire 100AZ telescope. Uh, and that got the telescope into focus. So right now it's going back to Andromeda, which was uh, the image that I got. And <laughs> here's the dog. Anyway, I've got two more images. Here's one of Galaxy M33, and here's another of Open Cluster M34. So as you can see, this telescope's not perfect for astrophotography, uh, it's not even really decent, but if you were using this as an outreach scope and you just needed something wide field, this might actually fill that niche. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to set up and use the Celestron Travelscope 60 for viewing the night sky. If you're new to astronomy or telescopes, please visit www.learntostargaze.com for loads of helpful stargazing tips. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Learn to Stargaze or subscribe right here on YouTube. And remember, the future is looking up.